Good morning, everyone, and welcome aboard Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas. I go by the legend in this video. Here I'm going to show you all around the Adventure of the Seas cruise ship. That's everything on the board the ship, from the food and the restaurants to the drinks and the lounges, to everything there is to do on board the ship. And starting up here at the pool deck area, and a pretty solid pool deck, um, definitely more for swimming than it would be set up for like deck parties and things like that. So you got two big pools, you got one right there and one over there. You got four hot tubs. And then a really cool kind of kid splash area, complete with a slide, and all sorts of like water guns and things like that. You have the Jumbotron here, and they use it a lot. Um, we're on a port day today, and they're going to show, I think, four movies, which is pretty cool. And very important, they also have two different pool bars. One down there that'll run longer hours, and one up here. I really like the seating area, too, above the upper deck pool bar. Now, these fancy loungers here, those are only people that are in a suite or concierge or part of the Pinnacle Club. So, uh... And not for me, but there's plenty of other loungers everywhere. All right, let's go explore this ship. And if you go above the pool bars, you do have this sun deck area here, which has pretty good unobstructed sun. And I believe these are laid out on sea days, the lounge chairs. On deck 12 above the pool area, you do get the jogging or walking trail aboard the Adventure of the Seas. Also, right by the pool deck, you get a cruise ship institution, and that is soft serve ice cream. Uh, open from about noon till six, uh, and you get chocolate vanilla or swirl. On the Lido deck, you'll also find the adult-only solarium area. Now, it's not going to be like an uh, indoor solarium; it's going to be an outdoor one because it does do mostly tropical itineraries. But it's pretty nice. Adult-only pool, big old solarium bar, and uh, two big hot tubs. On deck 13 in the back of the ship, you will find the sports court area. And this is used quite a bit on the cruise ship. They'll do different things. So like yesterday, there was a free throw competition, which yours truly took third place, won a bronze medal. Um, they'll do pickleball. They'll do, I think there's soccer over here as well. So this gets used quite a bit. I will say we were, we were shooting around yesterday and it was windy and it was very, very difficult to make basketballs in. And also over here, you do have the rock wall. It's going to be open different times of the day. Some really, I mean, the view you would get from up there looking out, especially on a sea day, would be awesome. And then one thing I find interesting, they'll do like competitions on the rock wall, like a speed climb kind of thing, where a certain time of day, everyone competes against each other to see who could go up the rock wall the fastest. Also in the sports court area, you will have ping pong. It's going to be located on deck 12, right underneath the basketball court. All the way on the back of the ship on deck 13, you'll find the flow rider the surf simulator. I find these things fun. These guys are much, much better than I am, but uh, it's really fun. They do different things. So sometimes they'll do stand-up surfing. Sometimes they'll do uh, boogie boarding where you lie down, but it's right here. It's on the back of the ship and it's fun. It's fun to watch. It's fun to, it's fun to do. In the back of the ship, you'll also find the ship's water slides. The complex, the duo is known as the perfect storm and they are pretty fun. One thing I love about these water slides is that they have like these translucent patterns in it. So as you're going down the tube, you're seeing whether it be polka dots or rings, squiggly lines, stuff like that. And they're, they're pretty solid uh, water slides to have on a cruise ship. Get one more view, looking straight up. And here is one more view of those water slides. Also in the sports court area, you'll find Adventure Dunes, which is a nine hole miniature golf course. It's actually one of the largest miniature golf courses I've seen on a cruise ship. And it does some really inventive stuff. They got lots of fun obstacles. And then I love this. So Adventure Dunes isn't just on deck 13. It's also on deck 12. So once you get here to hole six, you hit it in this thing. And then it goes down this crazy looking conveyor to get down towards deck 12. And I just love that. It's such, it's such an inventive idea. On deck five, in the middle of the ship, you'll find the Royal Promenade, which is really kind of the heart and soul of the Adventure of the Seas. And I'm going to take you on a walk from the rear of the ship to the front of the ship. The most noticeable thing right away is this crazy sculpture. Uh, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. To me, it kind of looks like a tornado, but it is very big and very, very unique. And you can always sort of tell how much the ship is moving or not because these guys tend to wobble back and forth. On the right side, you're gonna see guest services as well as shore excursions, two things you might need on your cruise. Over here on the left is gonna be the Champagne Bar. Uh, while it has a fun name, this does just run that standard Royal Caribbean bar menu. And stay tuned at the end of the video, I went through in the app and I screenshotted a whole bunch of stuff. So at the end of the video, you're gonna get the times guides for all the activities that were offered on the ship, 
as well as all the dining room menus for the main dining room and all the menus from the various bars. Make our way to the Royal Promenade. You're greeted with this very interesting looking sculpture. Now the Royal Promenade is going to be where you'll find all your shopping on board. On the right over there is going to be gifts and jewelry. So if you want watches or fancy lady jewelry, it'll be in there. For me, the general store, that's a good one because that's where you can buy your duty-free liquor. Also, some of your toiletries will be in there. On the right, you'll find Izumi, which is going to be an upcharged sushi bar on the ship. On the left is another good store. This is going to be the logo and souvenir shop. Let's pop in there real quick. And this will be where you can buy all of your Royal Caribbean stuff, all of your Adventure of the Seas stuff. There's going to be other stuff in here as well, but this is if you want a, a something from the ship, you can find it in here. All sorts of stuff. Now, they do have something that I buy on every single cruise ship. That is the ornament, as well as lots and lots of t-shirts and plushies and all sorts of things. Well, the bags are pretty nice. Uh, there's also staterooms. You can have these staterooms right there that overlook the promenade. All sorts of souvenir drinks for sale right there. On the right, it's going to be perfumes and cosmetics. And this is something I think every Royal Promenade, every Royal Caribbean ship with a promenade has. It's like, that a weird wax figure guy's doing something. Got some Coke freestyle machines. Then one of my favorite spots on board the boat, you've got the Duck and Dog, which is a traditional English style pub. First of all, I love this sign. That is absolutely wonderful. Uh, this will be used in the evenings as the Guitar Guy bar. And there'll also be a TV in here, pretty much showing Sports Center most of the day. Best selection of beer on the ship will be found in here. Uh, they got some good stuff. Stone IPA is in there. The Terrapin Tropical IPA is in there. A Hefeweizen's in there. I also got a whole bunch of like beer cocktails. That's what I'm drinking right now, which is going to be this is like a Hefeweizen with peach schnapps and whiskey in it. It's actually pretty solid. All the drinks are covered by the beverage plan. Now, this was uh, this is the first time I ever sailing out of Texas. And I was going to say they definitely don't hang a giant Florida flag when you sail out of Florida. As we move on, there's going to be a stage over here. They have a different guitar guy and some bands will play over here and they'll fill the, the promenade deck with music. You've got Ben and Jerry's, which is going to be an upcharge, as well as Cafe Promenade. So this is where we go to get those fancy coffees that will be included with the beverage fund. There is some beers and stuff over there as well. And then Cafe Promenade is open like 6 a.m. till like 2 in the morning. And they got all sorts of different stuff. This is most notably for the pizza. I'm doing this a little bit early. The pizza starts around 11 or so. 11.30, there we go. But right now it's got breakfast in it. Actually, little breakfast sandwiches. Had one this morning. Those are pretty good. And they'll normally have desserts and stuff over here as well. Across the way, you got the fashion boutique. Now, this is mostly going to be for the, the ladies. So it'll be purses and jewelry and lady shirts, stuff like that. And you also have the big fancy car, which is a staple on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. And that's it. That is the Royal Promenade. At the end over here, you got the Imperial Lounge, which I'll show you up next. Now let's move past the Tory Gate a good portion into the Imperial Lounge. And this is a lounge that's used for a lot of different things on board the boat. In the evening, it is mostly used for uh, having your pop music band play in here. They also do bingo in here, trivia's in here. Before you get inside, there's a card room that doubles as the Pinnacle Lounge. But it's a, it's a really, really nice lounge. It does have kind of that, that cheesy uh, Asian style theming in here, which I definitely dig. You don't get that on some of the newer boats. Uh, the band has been pretty good. As a guy that had to work on the cruise and sit down on his laptop for uh, pretty much hours each day, this was my favorite lounge to work in because these chairs right here are the comfiest I've seen on the ship. But uh, pretty, pretty good lounge. Pretty good entertainment in here as well. On deck three in the middle of the ship, you'll find Studio B, which is the ice rink on board the Adventure of the Seas. And it's used for two purposes on our cruise. They have a big ice show, like a big professional kind of ice show called Cool Art Hot Ice. And I thought it was a really good ice show. A big Beatles segment in the middle. And then also during the cruise, there's different times where you can just go skate on there. You sign a waiver, you put on the skates, and you go skating. Really cool. 
on decks three and four in the front of the ship, you'll find the Lyric Theater, which is the main show venue on board the Adventure of the Seas. Now I'm on a four night cruise, and there were a couple of different shows. On night one, we got a welcome aboard show with a stand up comedian. On night two, was their main production show with the singers and the dancers, and that was called Invitation to Dance. Definitely felt like a little bit of an older show as far as like uh, the music selections were. Uh, night three was a a guest performer, a vocalist who was awesome. That was by far the best show on the ship. Night 3 also had a late night comedian who was not my thing. And then tonight on night four, there's gonna be a farewell show featuring the same comedian from night one. So a uh, big, beautiful theater, but it's like, it feels dramatically underused. Like I feel like this should be like movies during the day or seminars or bingo or something like that. And it's really only used for one main show in the evening. Right now I'm on deck four in the front of the ship. That's where you'll find Chops Grill, which is the upcharge steakhouse on board. I have never eaten at Chops Grill. It is about $50 for dinner. So you're gonna get like nice filet mignon and that kind of stuff, but I've never been there. Where I have been, I've been quite a bit, is the Schooner Bar. My favorite bar on board the ship. It's um, not exactly their craft cocktail bar, but they specialize in a couple things. Right now, I'm drinking a pirate old fashioned. They've got like four or five different variations on the old fashioned, four or five different variations on the daiquiri, and four or five different variations on the Tom Collins. In the evening, this becomes the piano bar on board the boat. One thing I really like, each night they do a different like theme music hour of piano. Like yesterday at 8.45, it was Beatles hour. Tonight at 8.45, I'm really excited, it's Disney music hour. So I think it's really cool. And then after that, they just kind of play whatever the crowd recommends. On deck four in the middle of the ship, you'll find the Casino Royale. And I love it because it has like this old cruise ship kind of cheesiness and charm. It's done up like Hollywood. So you've got the big giant movie posters. You've got like these kind of wax figures, statue kind of things. You walk over a bunch of Hollywood stuff. You got the big movie posters. And it's a, I love the kind of cheesy tacky theme. We've got the ticket taker right here. The lady selling popcorn. And it is exactly what you think it'll be. It's a, a pretty average casino. Um, all your table games are going to be over here on one side. All your slot machines and stuff like that will be on the other side. I am not the biggest of gamblers, so I have actually not spent any time in the casino whatsoever. Probably I'll come back and play some video poker at some point. That's it's going to be my game of choice. There's a nice bar here, as long as steps that will go up to the Royal Promenade. And I had to show this off as well, because this is um, also kind of weird and interesting. I'm also surprised, like this ship's gotten redone a couple times that they haven't taken like these crazy statues out to put in more casino games. But I guess they probably have plenty of them. And they got some more obscure kind of games like your, your cash crane, things like that are kind of fun. Keymaster where you can win all these uh, big old wads of 20s. And there we go, that's the casino. Love the, uh, the decor and stuff. All the way at the top of the ship on deck 14, you'll find the lounge known as the Blue Moon, which is kind of like the observation lounge. This also doubles as the ship's nightclub. And I came up here one night for the, the silent disco party and that was pretty cool. I also love the views you get out here, especially on sea days. Like it is just awesome. On deck four in the middle of the ship, you'll find Boleros, which is kind of a, a Latin inspired bar. They do have a great drink menu in here, lots of tropical cocktails. And the big thing with this bar is in the evenings where your Latin band will play and a lot of people dance to the music. On decks three, four, and five in the back of the ship, you'll find the Sapphire, which is the main dining room on board the Adventure of the Seas. It is a absolutely beautiful main dining room here. Look at that. In this next segment here, I'm just going to show you everything that I have to eat in the main dining room, starting with dinner on night one. And to start off, I got the antipast. It is currently main course time, and I want the prime rib cooked medium rare. And it looks really, really good. Also, the prime rib is served with potato croquettes, which I really like. And for dessert, I ordered the warm chocolate hazelnut cake with ice cream. Back in the main dining room, this time for lunch. One of the main reasons I love lunch on Royal Caribbean Sea Days is in the main dining room, they always have mozzarella sticks, which is like one of my favorite snacks. 
And for lunch, I went with the royal chicken sandwich. It's a, a fried chicken sandwich with some fried onions on there. There's some avocado and stuff as well. And tasty fries. <laughs> it is dinner time on night two, and I'm starting off with my appetizer, charred beef capaccio, which I really, really enjoy. <laughs> For tonight's main course, I went with the one of my favorite meals on Royal Caribbean, the roasted beef tenderloin, medium rare. Beautiful. Dessert tonight is a winner, Grand Marnier Souffle. It is dinner time on night three, and uh, none of the appetizers really screamed me, so I just went for a main course, and that is a chicken parmesan. So I opted not to get an appetizer because I saw two desserts I really like. Starting here with the Mississippi Mud Pie. And for dessert number two, I got the chocolate custard. Back in the main dining room for lunch, and I had to get started with mozzarella sticks. I never pass up an opportunity to get mozzarella sticks. For lunch, I opted for the steak frites, so you got a really nice look at the steak, cooked medium rare, and then some uh, Parmesan fries. Dessert has arrived. I went for a white chocolate raspberry mousse. It is now dinner time on night four, and I started out with the cheese tortellini, which is an entree, but it's not an overly large portion, so I ordered it as an appetizer. For the main course, I went for the Thanksgiving dinner, so uh, turkey, corn, stuffing, all that good stuff. And for dessert, I went with the profiteroles, which is pretty much cream puffs, which is great. Yeah. On deck 11 and 12 on the front of the ship, you'll find Vitality at Sea, which on deck 11 is home to this fitness center, which will have all of your weight and cardio equipment in there. There's also a space for them to do classes, where they'll do like biking classes and abs classes. If you go up the very cool staircase up to the deck 12, that's where you'll find the spa and salon, which has a really cool kind of renaissance vibe and theme. I actually thought that was really, really interesting. And this is where you'll get all your spa favorites. So if you want to hit the salon and get all glammed up for a night out, or get any of those spa treatments, your, your massages, facials, things like that, you'll find them on deck 12. Looking in on deck four, they have a really nice walk around deck and uh, some very comfortable, relaxing chairs out here. As well, you play shuffleboard and just enjoy the views of the ocean. And as you're walking around, it doesn't go all the way around because you hit some stairs towards the front of the ship to head up to deck five. And if you follow those stairs all the way up, eventually it takes you out here to the helipad, which is a really cool area of the ship. There is a, there's normally, I've been up here a couple times and there's never been anyone over here. So it's very peaceful. You could hang out and just uh, get some great views of the ocean. Great place to watch sunset at sea as well, or to watch you sail into or out of a port. If you go all the way to the back of the ship on the walking trail, you end up here with this view. I love the aft view of a cruise ship. I always think they're really, really pretty. On deck 12 in the middle or back of the ship, you will find Adventure Ocean, which are the kids clubs on board, the Adventure of the Seas. The little ones go into the Aquanauts over there, and it's a, a larger kids club. And the teens would go over through that fun looking door there to the Optics Teen Club. Now I'm neither a child nor a teen, so I am not going in there. But in the middle of it is the arcade and a pretty good sized arcade. Could win some minions. Now the arcade, unlike the kids club, they're open for everyone. And a good variety of games. You can win some, some more high value stuff in this one. Super Monkey Ball, Ticket Blitz, Fruit Ninja 2. And the games aren't too, too expensive. Like this one is a, a $1.50. Uh, some cruise lines, I feel like, really overpriced their games. Not too bad here on the Adventure of the Seas. Um, this one is weird because it looks like the game is called Work Together, but it's actually Dead Storm Pirates. And then you can buy all your, your game cards over here. More high value game, like you can win the cool stuff here. You can win a Nintendo Switch or a PS4. Play air hockey, race cars, all sorts of stuff. Subway Surfer. That one that's not working right now. More crane machines, more high value prize stuff. A third air hockey table. Deal or no deal. Uh, gotta love Mario Kart. Now, if you win any tickets, I don't think you don't get physical tickets. They'll go on your uh, your card and you cash them in over here. 
But the arcade continues, more race car games. The spin the wheel, piano keys, pop star. Ooh, Plants vs. Zombies, I think is pretty new. Lane Master is really, really neat. It's a uh, kind of like a mix between bowling and skee ball. Uh, this is really fun, not working on our ship right now, but this is a Jurassic kind of VR ride. Got a Hummer themed race car game. Little kids basketball. This looks fun, a Haunted Amusement Park 2. Uh, Speed of Light. Really like the Ghostbusters game, this is a lot of fun. And then skee ball as well. Pretty solid arcade here. On deck 12 towards the rear of the ship, you will find Johnny Rockets, which is going to be an upcharge specialty restaurant. And now, you know, definitely the most inexpensive specialty restaurant on board for hamburgers, fries, shakes, things like that. One nice thing about Adventure of the Seas, they have these absolutely everywhere. So if you need to find a, your stateroom, the restroom, take a look at the cruise compass or venues around the ship. It's very handy. On deck eight near the rear elevator, you'll find RC Online, which is a series of laptops that you could uh, get on for a couple of bucks. One good thing about this, if you have to print something out, there is a printer up here. On deck six, you'll find Next Cruise. So if you're having so much fun on your Royal Caribbean ship that you want to book another one, you could do that over here. There's also a cool platform to look out over the promenade. On deck three, right by the entrance to Studio B, you'll find two different things. You'll find the ship's art gallery, as well as the photo gallery. So if you took any pictures on board, you could buy them here through any of these computers, or you could buy some fancy art. On deck 11, near the back of the ship, right by the buffet, you'll find Giovanni's Table, which is gonna be the upcharge Italian restaurant. I believe it's about $40 to eat here. Uh, dining room looks really pretty. Located on deck 11 in the back of the ship is the Windjammer Marketplace, which is the buffet on board. Let's go see what's for lunch. As soon as you enter the Windjammer, you get these uh, hand washing stations, so you gotta wash your hands. It's kind of interesting because the water comes out here, the soap comes out of that one, and then these things are hair dryers, which aren't participating. There it goes. Made it to the first station for lunch. You got a whole bunch of fresh fruits. Some fancy meats and cheeses. Then you get a bread selection. Bread selection's been really good. My personal favorite of those guys there, the soft cheese rolls. But you get lots of fancy good looking bread. And then an area that's really not for me, the salads. But they do have some weird stuff. Like look at this, this is curried rice and baby shrimp salad. That is very, very different. Then you get kind of like a build your own salad station, which is probably very important for some. And then more bread. So you grab utensils and plates over here. Let's see, what do we have for lunch? We got a chicken bolognese. Pasta, white sauce, moving on, this this looks good, I like this. Super cheesy baked pasta. We got zucchini, garlic, corn, parmesan frittata. Healthy stuff over here, green beans, carrots, I think. Mashed potatoes and gravy. It's Thanksgiving, I guess, so it's big old roasted turkey. Got pork piccata with some lemon caper butter, that sounds good. Escabeche fish. Oh, that, that looks really, really good. Look at the beef bouillon. Asian seafood broth, creamy vegetable soup, uh, Indian style stuff. You got dal, basmati rice, and tandoori chicken. And then a nacho bar. In the middle of the bay, you'll, play, you'll find the deli area where you can make yourself some sandwiches and get it uh, nice and pressed up. Also, there'll be various beverage stations with coffees, juices, teas, that kind of stuff. We're currently in the back of the buffet, and some sections repeat, some do not. But this is going to be like your um, your standard American fare back here. So burgers, dogs, vegetables, white sauce, French fries, more mashed potatoes and gravy. You got scalloped potatoes. Those look awesome. Mac and cheese, it looks really good. Chicken fingers. Uh, you got that beef again. And then you get a big thing. It looks like a seafood paella. 
Now we can't go to the buffet without looking at dessert. And here's what's on offer for dessert today. Jello, lemon meringue, oh, the chocolate pot of cream, a mango dream, coffee layer cake. Ooh, this pie looks really good. A blueberry streusel, red velvet cake, custard cherry tart. Oh, that's definitely happening. Raspberry pound cake. Chocolate bar. Oh, cream puffs. Oh, there's a matcha profiterole. And some cookies. Also something very important if you're on the beverage package like I am, there is a bar located all the way in the back. Along with plenty of seating and some big windows. Also in the buffet area is a pair of the Coke Freestyle machines. So if you are on the soda package or the ultimate beverage package, you can refill your souvenir cup in here. On the very front of the ship on deck 13, the view of this area, it kind of to me feels like a little bit of wasted space aboard the cruise ship, but you do have a big sun deck area. Really good spot. If you want to watch sailing into or out of a port, it's a pretty good spot to do that because you'll be very, very high up and get some really great views. See? All this space. One thing I find cool about these kind of cruise ships is by the elevators, they always have some sort of weird sculpture art. Like on this side, it is planets. Also, that is a, a trippy view. On deck seven near the rear elevators, first of all, you got these chairs with a wonderful view of the Royal Promenade, and that is the ship's library. Nice quiet space. Not too many books in here right now, but they're about to get one more book here on the Adventure of the Seas, and that is our own Andrew Hyde, his experience the point, the guidebook to Cedar Point. So we want to learn about Cedar Point from about 10 years ago. It's going to be, uh, let's see, put it right here uh, next to the children's Bible. There's, there's not a lot of books. So. But yeah, um, come take your picture with it. Share it to us on uh, Twitter. One thing I love about the elevators here in Royal Caribbean, they always change out the day, so you can know what day of the week it is in case you're confused. Also, I always find glass elevators just kind of neat. Let's see how clean of a ride we can get here as we're moving up towards the Lido deck. Deck 11. On deck 14, right by the Blue Moon, you also find the Suite Lounge. So if you're guesting in a suite, you could deal there. There's also the Diamond Lounge up here as well. If you have the Crown and Ankle Loyalty status of Diamond, you could go in there. I've got some nights on Royal Caribbean, but not nearly that much. So this is my first time ever cruising out of the port of Galveston. If you're a big fan of like theme parks and roller coasters like I am, there is the Galveston Pleasure Pier. So you can see, like we haven't taken off yet, but you can see the roller coaster from the cruise ship. And not many cruise ports you can do that. I know you can do it over at Port of Tampa, where you can see Iron Gwazi and Sheikr and the other rides at Busch Gardens Tampa, but kind of cool. Fun little place too. I do recommend the Galveston Pleasure Pier. So this is my first time ever cruising out of Galveston, Texas, and they've got weird rules. So when you're in port in Texas, you can only have certain, uh, certain liquors and beers available. I think they're ones that are only made like here in Texas. Something weird like that. So they've got this menu at all the bars until you get 12 miles into international waters. Kind of weird. I, I mean, I'm definitely going to go for a Shiner Bach, but not something I'm used to. And wrapping things up here, I want to show you around my cabin. I had an interior stateroom, 8675. Uh, actually, one of the larger interior staterooms I've had on a cruise ship. Like, you had a big couch, a, uh, a good sized bed, very kind of stiff bed, but uh, a good sized bed indeed. A decent sized TV. TV was a little weird. Not a ton of like regular channels on there and some weird stuff like they had the Ewoks TV show from 1985 on one of the channels, which is not what I was expecting at all on the ship. Um, down here, you will find what looks like a refrigerator, but it is not. This is a cooler. So uh, you can put your drinks in there. They're going to be just a little bit below room temperature. But a good size desk or vanity, like if you have to do work, put a makeup, pretty good area to do that. 
good size closet as well. And as far as interior cabins go, this one's it's a pretty good size. Bathroom in here, all the essentials. Do like it that it has the uh, shower doors instead of the dreaded curtain. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the wonderful clue ship toilet. And that absolutely terrifying noise. All right, and that will do it for my time here on the Adventure of the Seas cruise ship. Uh, some of my favorite parts, the schooner bar. By far my favorite bar on board the ship. Uh, really, really good drinks there. Uh, and also really friendly staff that helped as well. I loved having mozzarella sticks on lunch in the main dining room. Big fan of mozzarella sticks. Also, I like the theme piano hours every night. Like yesterday, going to Beatles piano hour. Tonight, going to Disney music hour. That was so much fun. I really like the ice show. I feel like some of the ice shows on board Royal Caribbean are not that good. This one I thought was really, really fun. Also, there's lots and lots of music on board the ship. No matter where you go, at any time, you could probably find live music somewhere. I, I like the pizza place. The pizza place is good. About 14 hours a day, they're serving pizza. And the beverage package. I'm slurring my words a little bit because today I've been enjoying that beverage package. And there's no limit on it. And it includes like every single drink on the menu, which is really, really cool. Now, some things I did not like quite as much. Um, I thought there were a lot of holes in the entertainment lineup. Like there would be hours a day. There was just nothing going on on the ship. And I know that's probably designed to make you go to the casino or the spa or the shops and things like that. But I, I don't like having... I felt like there was a lot of holes in the entertainment lineup. Also, I feel like their theater was very underutilized. There was one main show at night, so you had to go at that time, or else you were gonna miss the show. And then outside of that, the theater wasn't used at all. And I mean, when it was used, I, I enjoyed like one of the three or four shows I saw on there, and I really did not care much for the other ones. But there we go, that'll do it for my time on the Adventure of the Seas. If you have any questions about this cruise ship, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you guys didn't watch videos like this, I, I couldn't go on cruise ships like this. Also, if those are wondering where Molly is, well, she can't make every one of these. I actually got this cruise ship for free by, by I cashing a whole bunch of points. I played the My Vegas series of apps. So I cashed a whole bunch of points. Uh, cruise ships don't go on sale very often. When they do, they go really, really quick. So I cashed it in, booked the ship, and then Molly's like, I, I don't have those days off, I can't go. So that's why Molly is not here right now. But, do you play those apps, they're really, really fun. Anyway, thank you so much for listening, watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.